It's six o'clock, so I'm going to call the meeting to order and accept nomination for select board chair for the next year. I nominate Chris Jarvis. Second. Okay, and do I have any other nominations? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We didn't get like to say, huh? Having hearing no nom more nominations, <laughs> I can talk to the clerk. <laughs> hey. Nay, nay. There you go. So one nay. Um, so that's good. <laughs> there you go. Can you vote against yourself? <laughs> I just did. I don't know. It's... Well, it looks like Chris was outnumbered, like unfortunately. There you go. Well, I was I was reading through our uh, list of things that we're supposed how we're supposed to act, and you can vote, you can nominate, and you sure. can do everything on anything. Yeah, oh, yeah. so true. Maybe. So yes, you can say no. <laughs> We're not going to listen. I know, to but it still went through. That was the only thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So we just need a motion then to approve the agenda, unless there's anything that needs to be amended. Move to approve as written. Second. Sorry, hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 So Aye. Probably Aye. welcome Denise. So welcome Denise. If anything comes up, just. Just you didn't stop. You didn't bring a cake of cookies for all of us. <laughs> yeah, Paul didn't tell you. Did yeah. tell you that part? <laughs> Paul. He didn't <laughs> tell me my first meeting either. So wow. all right. that's the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he brought them to his last meeting. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Six years late, but he brought yeah. them. <laughs> that's right. They better late than never. That's right. That's right. So, they were good. So we'll try to as we go through, not just so usually the first two meetings after town meeting day is a lot of the annual appropriation pieces that usually don't change a whole lot from year to year. Um, so you'll see some of those on on this agenda as well. There will be some on the next one. So we'll, I'll try to, and my, myself and yeah. Therese, what we're talking about, we'll try to um, spend a little extra time on what it is for so that you can kind of get a good okay. handle on that. And don't forget eight o'clock. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and, yeah, eight o'clock. You turn into jinx yourself. Then it's gonna be late. Yeah. And then, and then once we get through on the normal, you know, um, agenda items, if there's ever a time where you're like, "Ooh, this is way over my head," it just you know, yeah. feel what's free to ask questions. Um, we can get you up to speed pretty quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the history? <laughs> a lot of the board is really, you know, it takes. I don't know. It took me probably a year, like just sit and soak it up and understand <laughs> everything. And then the next year, you're like, oh, I, I know what that is, you know? Okay, so thank you. So we're happy you're here. So welcome. Thank you. That's why That's why we get you for three years because the first <laughs> year is kind of like- mm -hmm. Learning curve. Get, then we get two years out of you and then you get a rerun, so. That's right. All right, so we do have one, um, one appointment. So we have the energy committee here solo. Yeah, <laughs> Nicole's big committee. <laughs> Her. Um, can everybody hear me? Should I use a bigger voice? I can hear you. <laughs> so I um, we're bringing our goals for 2023. We wanted to check in with everyone here, get some feedback before we finalize them within our own group. Um, and I also sent over the T. Rourke report card, which should be familiar to some of you. Um, new members might not be as familiar. So that's there for reference. Um, and the the thing that sticks out for me in that is when you look at the electric vehicle goal for 2025, it's 126 on the road. And we're so far <laughs> short of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so really just trying to push forward and do what we can um, and not just fall into that, you know, pit that you fall into when you're really far behind and you just give up. We, we do need to keep going and we are making some progress, definitely in some places, slow and steady, we'll win the race, hopefully. And you got your grant, right? For work, for um, manpower or person power? From VCRD. Manpower. When does that start? So that I'll go into a little bit more detail as we get to that part of the goals. Okay. Um, but it's, I'm working with Laura, Cab and Bailey oh, now. Yes. And we're um, just formulating like the schedule for it. Oh, great. Oh, good, good. I wasn't sure if it was one of those things you had to wait, you know, a year and a half for or something. So oh, good. Good, good. I'm glad it's working out. Uh, Nicole, I found in reading this, <clears throat> I finally figured out one of them. GHD, GHG, 
but I have no idea who MERP is or VCRD is. There's no definition, or usually there's a letters and then a, in parentheses what it is. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, and I'm gonna go through each of them and we'll slow down and make sure that we get each one of those um, things hashed out um, because it's you know just coming from like the committee and we're volunteers. We're just I, I understand that. I just when you know if you. <laughs> I won't tell you how to do your committee, but <laughs> I I like Bethel Energy Energy Committee BEC. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the greenhouse gases when it's when the word emission is there, I connect the dots. <laughs> not many dots to connect to the other. Yeah, and you know, in professional writing, you are you're supposed to do the first the long name and then put abbreviations at the end to make sure everyone's together. Um, but you know, volunteer writing, not quite professional. <laughs> <laughs> So that's where we're at. <laughs> okay. okay, I just, it would make it easier to understand. Definitely, um, and we'll definitely keep going into that. But starting at the top, vision. Um, our vision is in line with the state of Vermont's vision, which is to have 90% of all energy demand being met by renewable energy sources by 2050, which is about 25, 27 years from now. And this comes from the Vermont Climate, the Vermont Comprehensive Energy Plan. And this also comes from the Vermont Climate Action Plan just recently passed, which essentially released a whole bunch of funding out into Vermont to help implement projects that bring us closer to having 90% by 2050. Um, and that money is only gonna be available for a short time. So we're trying to stay organized here at the Energy Committee. We have our mission. Nothing's really changed in our mission other than um, we have one new line about focusing on low income residents. And other than that, we have one new member and that is all that's changed on the front page. So diving into goals, we have outreach, which is really um, you know where we live as volunteers, making sure we're getting out, connecting with our friends and neighbors in Bethel. And what's different this year is we have an email list that we're maintaining pretty well. We've been gathering emails from our outreach tables. We have somewhere around like 20, between 20 and 30. Some people just want monthly updates. Some people want intermittent updates. So that's going. And you all can join the email list. You can send me your email. You can, on Facebook, there's a link to join. We try to have the link out everywhere, but if all else fails, just send me your email and I'll pop you on there. Um, what we've learned from doing all this outreach is that this year, people are looking for information on heat pumps, the Vermont Climate Action Plan, solar power, and e-bikes. The When we did like a little survey downstairs during the open house in December, the top three projects they thought we should work on we're continuing to do outreach, looking into the energy coordinator role and energy audits plus solar on municipal buildings. Mm. So that's what people are telling us that they would like the town to do. And aside from that, not a whole lot has changed with the outreach. We consolidated electric vehicle outreach into general outreach because we just didn't have enough capacity to keep focusing on it as a separate thing at this time. But if anyone wants to volunteer and help us with that, <laughs> <laughs> we're here. Um, and so moving down into municipal infrastructure, which is kind of how we could just coin anything that we really have to interact with the town to accomplish. We discovered that the Arlington Energy Committee is trying to come up with a tool to track their greenhouse gas emissions. <laughs> and so if you all remember when I was here in November, that was one of the suggested projects that we sent over with that proposal to VCRD, Vermont Council on Rural Development. And um, so that was something I remember, Chris, you mentioned you thought it'd be handy for us to have a baseline so we know where to go from here. So if they're doing that in Arlington and we can just kind of sit back and watch and maybe gather that tool when they're done with it, um, that's, we're just going to keep track of that. And when they do it, we'll come back and let you all know what they came up with. Nice. It's always nice to have someone else. We don't have to invent the wheel every time. It's nice if someone else is doing it and they have the ability and the money to do it. It'd be nice to see a volunteer after. That's great. 
and they have mm-hmm. a little more capacity. It's like a little higher income down there, closer sure. to the New York, Massachusetts border, but they're a town of 2000. Yeah. You know, small rural town, like mm-hmm. it, it'll be good. Um, okay. Scott offered to use any existing data we have now to try to get us a rough baseline. Not sure if he's still going to be into that because he just got elected as a treasurer, trustee, public trustee of public funds, which will He'll have like a meeting a year or two meetings a year. So he won't be, be too tied up. <laughs> Rick is the other yeah. trustee of public funds along with Sandy Farrell. So, so, so yeah, he offered to, um, if there is any data that we could pull together, he's willing to do it. Oh, nice. um, so, I mean, if, would that be something you'd be willing to work with him on? What does it need? I'm not quite sure. I would imagine, um, how many gallons of gasoline were used last year, um, probably something like that and we track that anyways because we bill twice a year so that's easy enough we bill in um usually in december january and then again in june because we the road crew pays for all the fuel and then we bill the fire department and we bill the constables and then they reimburse them so we track diesel and gas usage so if he wants to follow up could he just reach out to you tell him send me an email yep okay and yeah we'll see how that goes yeah it's no problem and we're hoping to maybe visit the equ- equipment committee one time. Um, there's, you know, it's like peanut butter and jelly. You have a car, you need gasoline. They, equipment and energy go together. So we just wanted to let them know what we're up to and see if any natural cross-pollination occurs. Mm-hmm. When I see the muddy roads right now, I'm thinking, what if more people used e-bikes? Would we have less of that? Or even just if people had smaller, lightweight vehicles, it conserves gas. And it's also less rough on the roads. Mm-hmm. You have these F two fifty is like <laughs> <laughs> they just maybe not be able to get home or get through the mud. So it depends where right. they. So live, there'd I be guess. no wear and tear on the house. Yeah, the roads no be at the bottom. They'd be walking. <laughs> they'd be walking. So that's just After kind here. of an example of maybe yep. where some cross pollination could occur. Yeah. Um, and that's I think if anything on this list were to fall to the wayside, it would be that one because that's going to mean an extra meeting for someone on the committee. Right. Um, but we want to put it on there and we do want to try. Okay. And moving on to um, curtains, we, we wanted to talk about curtains. Um, I you know asked the Historical Society if there's any restrictions and they said as long as we're not hammering into the mm-hmm. walls, we might be able to do it. So I haven't like formally spoken to them. I just spoke to a member informally Mm -hmm. so going the formal route and getting cohesion seeing if everyone agrees we might be able to get some curtains up yeah on like big old windows thermal like thermal curtains for warmth and stuff you mean they could be i know you mentioned um wanting some like echo reduction well any soft surface would provide echo reduction so certainly yeah i mean it, it certainly couldn't hurt if they were I mean, you can get curtains for your home that have some sort of thermal backing. So I would think anything would be helpful. Yeah. And it could, you know, improve the quality of our meetings here. Yeah, the sound would definitely help. Um, so and that, the light. Sometimes we don't hit that right in here. I, yeah, I've got a sunburn <laughs> yeah. sitting in the audience one time, yeah. just on one side of my face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so that is just kind of like projects we can do. And then moving into... Um, share news about MERP and how the town of Bethel is participating. So MERP stands for the Municipal Energy Resilience Resilience Program. And this comes from money from the state. I'm not going to try to say exactly where, but in general, it comes from money from the state that is being released into towns. We have a coordinator at t Rourke. His name is Harry. And he is here specifically to help towns implement the MERP funding. So you can use this funding for municipal buildings. The buildings have to have an energy audit. And then once they get audited and you know what you need, you can apply for up to $500,000. And that's a competitive process. Bethel has a moderate energy need. So we're in like the top 10 need of the region but we're not like high. Um, So there's money available. It's dependent on energy audits. I think we're really lucky that we actually have a town manager because a lot of the other towns trying to do uh, participate in the program don't. 
and they're just kind of working from their select boards and energy committees. Um, so we do have a, a opportunity here to really utilize this. I think if we, if Therese- I already did it. Yeah, you already did the survey. Yeah, I did the survey and then Harry said he'd let me know when it came out. I saw an email today from him that I didn't get a chance to read, but I had to submit a building and I called the fire chief about his building and talked about our building. And so you just had to do a survey and give him square footage and stuff for the buildings you wanted to look at. So I did do that. And then he just said, he'd let me know. But like I said, I had an email from him today and I didn't get a chance to read it yet. So maybe that's it. Maybe he's saying we made the first cut or something. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we're definitely working on it. Do we want to do an energy audit in this building? Well, you guys had this redone not long ago. So you already made choices at that point that you're still paying a bond on. So when you redid it, you made choices, which I'm assuming that you made for historical purposes about what you would insulate, what you wouldn't, if you left the original glass in the windows, that sort of thing. So I actually did not pick this building because what we do is we manage the heat pretty well here, keeping it turned down to you know, down all the time during the winter. And I did like the idea of the curtains. I thought that would help. And, um, you know, the downstairs is all efficient was because when they did the upgrade, but I think that at the time you made choices about what you were going to do here. So was anybody here when that happened? Cause I did not live here then. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I know someone was on the committee, but it wasn't. I wasn't on the committee. I wasn't yeah. out. Yeah, I wasn't out. But we didn't, but I'm assuming, because I've been through this process before for another town, that you probably, I'm assuming, chose not to insulate the upstairs or a certain part just because of the cost and the historic value of the building, what they were going to do. But so this, because I felt like it was low-hanging fruit because we don't use it that much. I mean, this can be empty for, you know weeks months at a time in the winter time i mean except for the select board and we could actually move our meetings to town hall to an office during the winter if we wanted to to keep it even cooler in here but um so this wasn't a building i chose but also because you're already paying a bond on it which you haven't paid off yet so. but doesn't mean we can't do one it's like we know the answer that's <clears throat> the the thing is it's free mm -hmm. so it doesn't hurt to get that information we don't have right. to pay anyone and I, I, I'm not sure how full the energy audit will be. Yeah, I don't if they're going to do the full lower door test or anything. I hope so. Because that that's definitely I don't want that. That's, that's like first on the list. I was going to say, I hope so. I want that done. So <laughs> I can talk to Harry about adding another building. So that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. I just didn't. I know I didn't have the money to deal with it at that point. But because we had bigger priorities, I felt that it were sucking up way more energy. But I'm happy to put it on the list. Or can you apply it? Yeah, to to have an audit and see yeah I see can what, scary. what's possible is I'll see if we can still add it or who knows they might find that one big hole that we could plug for a thousand dollars that's right you never know right you never know I'll ask Gary and um so it, and since we have such uh, strong administrative capacity on the MERP side of things which we kind of usually don't with energy committee stuff but we have you know a town manager who can help help us keep track of the buildings. We have Harry at T-Work who can do grant writing. Um, the energy committee, we can share news about this. We can tell the town, hey, these buildings just got an energy audit. And then that storytelling provides leadership. It reminds people that we're all working towards that same goal um, and falls under community outreach, which again is where we live. So that would fit us perfectly. Um, so that was kind of where we were seeing ourselves falling into that. Also under the MERP um, funding, there's $4,000 separate from that 500,000. And that 4,000 is for community capacity building. So like community outreach stuff, um, think advertising for events or buying food when you have a speaker. And we were hoping that Harry would come visit us at the energy committee and talk more about that piece of things, possibly in April or May, depending if we meet tomorrow. Um, and so you all are also welcome to come to that if you want to expand just the conversation and talk more about what that program is. And he, you can reach out to him at any time. He's paid to deal with this. So, <laughs> so use him as much as we can while we have him. That's okay. This, this is the program that was before the legislature a year ago, and we voted here to endorse that or to encourage the adoption oh, that's right. because that was funds that would be available to towns 
for addressing climate and infrastructure resiliency needs. So this is the result of that vote. Nice. Good to know. And if I understand correctly, at least the, the $4,000 grants, there's no copay. Nope. And I'm not sure about the, the bigger ones. But. Yeah, the, the little $4,000 grant is not competitive at all. It's pretty much you just, it's for each town. They blocked it off for each town. As long so, as it, so basically, if you get the four grand, you use it for energy stuff. So just work it out with Education. Harry. So work it out with Harry. If it's something, if he'll write it and he needs me to do something, let me know. So Yeah, you know, and we'll have to talk a bit with the energy committee. Yeah, they, they well, I'm just saying you guys talk amongst yourselves. Let me know. Yeah. I, won't, I won't write it, but if he will. I he can. will. He'll write it for and us. That's what I'm saying. If he'll write it, let him write it. I'll, I'm happy to sign off on it. So. Yeah, we'll definitely check back in when we have a yeah, solid just, just idea. Just send me an email. Just email me, Nicole. Sounds good. Um, so that's one of the bigger, um, like, bigger things going on. And that's, it's across the state of Vermont. You're going to hear um, about it a lot. And luckily, you have an energy committee here to inform you. That's keep right. you. <laughs> um, so, and then we have, lastly, regional collaboration. And this comes out of a question that's been circling for a while. You know, like, can the energy committee really have the capacity to deal with meeting all these goals? Um, you know, we're so far behind that we're laughing at how <laughs> far behind we are. So if we were to like, you know, and, and we're also really a group of realistic people. So if we're to realistically think, if we were to really boogie and meet these goals by 2025, how much help would we need? How much funding would we need? Um, and so this conversation, we're talking about like, maybe we hire a shared energy coordinator. But before anybody signs off on that, we need more information is this cost gonna be, give us a benefit? Um, so that's what this conversation is about. And VCRD, Vermont Council on Rural Development, they, that proposal I sent last year that we all signed off on here, um, they accepted that, they approved it, and they wanna work to give us administrative assistance to facilitate the conversation. So a moderator, help us plan, give us a Zoom platform or however we meet. Um, and so that's happening now. I've chatted with Laura a bit, and we're confirming which towns are going to be involved in the discussion. And we expect mm -hmm. it to be running from like late spring through summer. And then by fall, we should have like a written summary of what we learn. Nice. And so what everyone here can do is think of like your questions, you know, like, what do you want us to get out of this conversation? Um, and really just like, don't be afraid to think big. And because we have, right now we have attention from a state organization, the regional planning commission. And if we can give them feedback about what we really need, then we'll actually, you know, be in their ear. We'll be the bug in their ear. <laughs> it seems if the state has all these goals for energy for 2050, that they would be offering, you know, assist. how do they think small towns are going to get there? You know, they can't, we can't dump it all on the backs of all these energy committees. You think that they would be funding or smart enough to realize that they need to fund something or with these mandates needs to come assistance and goals and, you know, something better. Cause you're right. I mean, you guys are have jobs and have lives. It's hard to dump all those, but Nicole, we have to meet this by 2050. It's on your shoulders, you know? So it is interesting. I think to me that, um, you know, if the state wants us to do this, we need a little more help getting there. And it's, it's um like a noted problem. Oh, you know, I like bet. the policy <laughs> came down. And as you know, like we're kind of the first wave of folks, like we're among some a few other states in the nation who are really like coming through with this policy first and trying to implement it. So we're coming up with these, you know, we're like, oh, we didn't think about that, all this administrative burden. Um, and but we're not the this is happening like across the, the country. Like, I'm sure. Um, in like Denver, they're hiring people within their city to do like sustainability coordination. There's like an air pollution controller. Wow. Um, Pittsburgh, they have similar roles coming up. Um, Salem, Massachusetts, they have like a community coordinator to help people weatherize that they're hiring. Like they're giving people money for this. Yeah. Wow. Um, and there's also part of the conversation is that small rural towns, low income, are being left out of the conversation. They're they're not even being considered. As we see all these cities and higher income rural towns yeah. getting the assistance, we're we're not even like making a peak. So the fact that we're saying that there's a problem, 
we're a little bit ahead of all the other rural communities who haven't identified it yet. Wow. And so this is like, you know, if it's uncomfortable, it's because we're among the first. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for looking into that. Two things. Uh, the weather, I just spoke of weatherization. There is a group in the in this area, CBCAC, that does it if they if they're made aware. And there's an application process. Uh, it's available to every single person in the. I want to say Windsor and Orange County, basically. It's already there, but so nobody is not very many people are using it. Um, so that's the one thing. The second thing is the elephant in the room. I see no numbers on how many megawatts Vermont is using. How many megawatts are they going to need? How are we going to get those billions of dollars to in, increase that infrastructure to put that power where we want it? And maybe I'm all washed up, but nobody is, I've been here, only the 30th person I've asked <laughs> that, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Numbers, please. I'm a numbers guy. Give me some numbers. And nobody. Were you? Right and I, I, I sat down here with these the senators and the representatives, and nobody's got those numbers. They kind of, yeah, oh, okay, okay. They have them, but they don't want to release them. Were you? It, now, that's attend? exactly right. Yeah. That's where, um, because it's going to make your head. There's stick. a recent series from the Public Service Board that's happening now. The, the last um, meeting in the series is this Wednesday. And that's actually time when you can ask those questions and at least get some sort of response. Um, and that definitely like those more like regional and national questions about our broader energy use. That's also part of what I think we need help seeing and also having people advocate for us. Because again, like we keep getting left out. Like we have, okay, a solarization campaign. Everyone puts solar panels on their roofs. No one has battery storage. So next time there's some sort of winter weather event, all of our energy is getting trucked out of Vermont and <laughs> we're still left with, you know, the, the dirty energy, you know, oil, gas, and, you know, the, the others. That's a good, yeah, no uh, battery storage. I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. And well, it's, we power up by a program with a Tesla wall. And I, I know several people have them and they work pretty well. They yeah. Go, go two, two to three days on this one house. So I think, you know, when I hear what you're saying, I hear like energy resilience, like how are we going to, um, you know, like maintain the energy levels we have now if we're adding to the load, especially in this region. Um, and also part of it we don't really talk a lot about is conserving energy. You know, like part of it is like, yes, we'll have more with electric vehicles, electrifying our heat sources and all that. Um, but also like, we don't really talk about conserving. You know, if when there's a winter storm, what if we all decide we're just gonna cook on one burner instead of everyone cooking in the oven after oven after oven? What if when there's a winter storm, we all decide we're not gonna take a shower tonight? We'll just let our hot water heater rest. <laughs> I know, like, ay, 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 we're not gonna take a shower. <laughs> so I think conservation is a really important part of the conversation um, as well as our Have broader you grid. To, the, to Milato? What's that? Have you reached out to Milato to try to get in there and talk to someone about energy? No, they're the big. They're the big energy consumer in this town. They're a huge one, and they have because I've done the work there. They had a conversation about a battery about the size of two tractor trailers, so that they could operate because of their business. If the power went down, they needed to operate. They still needed to operate, so they didn't do it. I'm thinking it's probably the cost, but maybe you could get some more information from those folks because I know they're also very. They are very good at looking at new machinery that is energy efficient. Yeah. You might be able to get some information because, because they use so much. We might have some information for you. Definitely. And when we kind of bring it back to the um, discussion about an energy coordinator, I see that as something someone who's paid and professional would do. And like me as a volunteer, like, sure, I can call them and reach out and represent the energy committee. But like, Wow, that's just a lot. 
<laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's putting a lot on my plate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as I keep having over the years, like people come to me and say like, hey, can you do this highly technical skilled thing? Can you interact with this massive organization that's really intimidating? I'm thinking like, man, I I need some backup. Mm-hmm. Whether someone at T-Rourke has an assigned position and I can call them when I need them or if they're the person actually doing it. Um, that's really what that conversation is about. Dave, what was the organization you were talking about? CV? CVCAC. Central Which... Mont Community Action. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I feel like I know Nicole, there you go. You know that. I feel like Nicole had done that once on one of her Facebook <laughs> posts. You know, what were you doing though? Something something um, Wednesdays or? Oh, that was Button Up Vermont. That was through Efficiency Vermont. Oh, okay. That was. I'm not sure if we've promoted that specific program. Um, but again, a coordinator, you know, there's the, just yeah. the concept of an administrative no, coordinator. No, I was just curious about putting that on the website or doing something on Facebook. So it's Central Vermont Community Action. Okay. Huh? Committee. Committee. Oh, okay. Sorry. I missed my last letter. Okay. <laughs> and are they the folks that have that office by the school in Randolph? I have no idea where they are. It's I, online. I think I had to do was online. <laughs> I thought they had an office in Barrie. <clears throat> there's so some energy uh commission place that's out of barry yep all right I'll right take off a, granite street all right i'll take a look and see if it's something we can promote on you know facebook and front porch form if there's a, you know people if there's availability there for them for homeowners for assistance that's free then, then we'll get them you know get an application yeah those are the kinds of things that we might be able to use this four thousand dollar grant for to get have people come from Efficiency Vermont and have people come from this organization. Do you know that this is available to you uh, to help you winterize your home or weatherize, uh, you know, all of those kinds of uh, to bring in, just have some basic. So how are you going to keep warm this winter? The basic problem with 99% of anything in this world is lack of communication. Well, right. So I don't know, even, I mean, even I, I'm saying something to you, you'll say it to somebody else. I, I say it to, if I see someone who is having trouble, did you get your house weatherized? No, I don't know how to do that. Well, here, call these people. If your income is a certain level, it's free. They come in your house, all of a sudden it's warm. One of my neighbors had that done probably four or five years ago. It was a central Vermont. Um, whatever it is, the acronym, but they came to her house a few years, quite a few years ago, and actually installed the heat pump and everything else. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll look to and see if we find the information or whatever. We'll, you know, we can put it in water bills. We can put it in things like that. And we're good at getting the information out on Facebook and from Porch Forum and stuff to share with people. So I know from the school that we, this region is one of the, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's not not the word poor, but we are more income group of the state yeah. around here because our we have a like a forty nine percent of the families uh, qualify oh, for right for like reduced a reduced lunch. Yeah, exactly. So okay. Their income level. We'll take a peek. So we should be uh, accessing some of those things. Yeah, certainly. And you know, sometimes when we've advertised a bunch, it's just a matter of people just not taking advantage of it. So well, and it's also like it kind of exacerbates itself because it's like we're low income, so we don't have the resources to have a coordinator to share the information about all these wonderful programs. So everyone just stays stays under the rock, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's you know, it's odd to like nowadays we don't really take the value of like just a person, just a point person, which always tries to streamline have like lean production efficiency. Um, I I think we just need a person or even just a better network between towns. I'm not, you know, we want to do that with the towns and towns to chip in the, the fees to pay for these people. But I've been to several meetings where Efficiency Vermont doesn't charge a company to come in and do a large or small evaluation like we just did the Tumbridge Fair, all the lighting. Uh, maybe if I realize you're very busy, but if someone could approach Efficiency Vermont, CBCAC, and I don't know who else, but a group to say, okay, you guys need to get together with somebody that can push your our programs. 
Yeah, and it may be that's something that Harry's going to do at Two Rivers is to is to do that. So is he's certainly been good at disseminating that information so I mean, far. I don't know what they're doing with the, the ARPA money, but somebody's <laughs> got a, a pocket full somewhere. Somebody does. And I think maybe some feedback from this discussion, we might be able to give direct feedback about Harry's role mm -hmm. and say like, hey, you know, we're we're talking about how what else we need help with. Can we just put that into his role? Right. And that might solve the problem there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but just having a, you know, more professional conversation and have a written summary, I think that'll help us all um, move forward with that discussion. Sure. I think it's great. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the rest of this stuff. Um, energy stuff always brings up a lot of conversation and thoughts. So I, I appreciate everyone's time. <laughs> um, is there anything else? Any questions for us or anything we just should know before I skedaddle? What, Go ahead. What's the meeting tomorrow night? The meeting tomorrow is um, 5.30. It's supposed to be here. And we're going to review these goals and confirm them. Okay. I thought you said somebody from... T work was going to be here, or is that a different meeting? We're thinking like maybe April or May. Okay, so that's not tomorrow. Okay. That will be, yeah, the next meeting. Once we get ourselves together, then we'll check in with him. So, again, like you said, we could talk about this all evening and just get stay punctual mm -hmm. to your schedule. But a few of the questions that I had written down, you know, I'm kind of more of a like, how do we approach this like best bang for a buck, get most people involved quickly? And, you know, I know that we are going to be told that we have to do municipal audits for a thing. But, you know, when we talk about the municipality, we're talking six buildings and 12 trucks or 12 vehicles, right? It's a very small, 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 small footprint of the town. And the best bang for the buck is is residential, right? I mean, so how, like Dave's saying, is, I think a lot of it is, you know, you mentioned uh, Vermont Climate Council money, and there's various different other identities right now that has money or programs or things. And I wonder how we can incorporate that so that we can get the information out to people. Um, because most people don't know that you can do a lot of these things. So I think maybe tasking the committee with is how can we get that information? But one, can we, let's pool all the information that makes sense for our town. And then how can we get that information out to each individual resident? Like, could we put something in a water bill when we send it out or, or different things? The, 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 the one that keeps coming to mind is we're going to be going through um, tax reappraisals over the next year and a half. So is there something that the energy committee can partner with the listers? And while we're in seeing houses already, is there an opportunity to, you know, do your lister duties, but at the same time, leave a flyer or something, leave something with energy efficiency or, or help them tie them to the person that could give them an energy audit or, you know, like, yeah, so, so well, because well. we're going to be in these houses over the next year and a half. So it's an opportunity to say, Hey, this house will make it up is, you know, it was built in 1890 and it needs a lot of weatherization. And then you could target mail them stuff. Well, know, and maybe like, that's another 4,000. <laughs> yeah. The so mini grants, um, you know, that might be something for the energy committee to think about yeah. as like that community capacity, it's like, hey, we're coming up with this, you know, we're coming up to doing these audits and we'd like to partner it as a means of yeah. better communication. Because it's the only time in our lifetime here that, you know, it, as a government identity that we're going to have the opportunity to be in people's houses to actually see what what they have and don't have, right? Mm -hmm. So it might be an opportunity to say, or talk to them about, did you know that you could get these windows replaced or this... Yeah, um, that, that uh, four thousand dollars. If you could use some of it to create a flyer that we give to the contract service, Nemric, if they're willing to drop it, I mean, they may be willing to leave it while they go inside and do an inspection. They may not, but we could yeah. mail them with tax bills, or we could put them in, you know, put the information in, you know, town report, but mail them with tax bills. We would do inserts and tax bills, so maybe the four thousand dollars, if you get it, could be used to generate and print a flyer that's good for you know, a year or something right. like with contact information, maybe that's something. So Just yeah, but and maybe Henry, Harry already has it all together. Who knows? We do have vital communities does put together a um, flyer that has all of the like phone numbers you can call to get information. Right. Um, something that flyer is missing is federal and state tax credits. 
Um, but between that flyer and our two other flyers for federal and state tax credits, I think we do have it all covered. Great. It's just about getting it in people's hands in, exactly. in a way that they can understand it. Yeah, because we do mail tax bills in July. So, I mean, that would go to every homeowner and then we could um, target by, um, well, if it goes to our building owner, it also goes to the owner. So the landlord as well, if it's an apartment building. So if we got into tax bills um, beginning of July, that would be getting it into, I mean, you want it in the landlord's hands, not the renter's hands. So I mean, and, and I think the, and the listers may be willing, well, the listers won't be in there, but the contract yeah. people for Nemrick will, they may be willing to leave a flyer and they may not. We've already signed it. And efficiency of Vermont is really like the best for, mm -hmm. for having like all the rebates and everything and mm -hmm. all those flyers, like a full packet of how to take care of your house. Mm -hmm. Like all that information does exist and we definitely could pull it together and use it in that manner. I think it, it is possible. And it's just got to be tact tastefully done because you know how like if you get a flyer that's got a lot of information on it, you're kind of like, yeah, okay. But if you had something that maybe it's more targeted, like one or two things that you could do in your house, you know what I mean? Because if, if you give somebody something that's got 15 options on it, they're more or less to tune out mm -hmm. that information piece, right? Rather if it was more about, I don't know, the energy committee makes up here are the top three things we'd like to see residents doing. It might be heat pumps, it might be window replacement and insulation or something. At least if you had those things, like, did you know you, here are contact informations to get, you know, new window, new or windows. Free services or free services or yeah, yeah, qualify for free. So people just so that act they can really they look can, at that. If they know it's not going to cost them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely see what, um, uh, see what you're talking about. I think that is a good um, opportunity to get, like you said, hit hit every house. They're going to be in them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we had to have our hot water heater replaced a few years ago. We had had an oil one for 15, 18 years. <clears throat> and we went with an electric one. But I looked up on Efficiency Vermont. It's like, okay, here's a bunch of them. They're really good. And we got a $900 rebate. You know, actually, when the when the plumber went and picked up the um, the hot water heater, the rebate was applied right then and there. So it's not like we paid it all up front and then we waited for oh, a check nice. to come back. So boom, mm -hmm. he just took it right off the right off of there. Yeah. Okay. We have um two, two outreach events plus we plan to be at the Forward Festival. So as far as like getting information out to people, um, yeah. you know, aside from like going right to their house and leaving it on their door or whatever, um, we will also be like we're planning on having two like distinct outreach events plus the Ford Festival. So we could also get some of this information out at those times too. The legislature in, in Montpelier is very, very aware that uh, it doesn't do any good to say something is free if people have to have the money up front. Uh, and there's uh, two pieces of legislation going through right now to supplement all of the weatherization funding that they um, put forward that are supposed to quote front load the resources for those on the bottom end of the of the economic ladder. So if you can't afford to take out a loan, <laughs> yes. uh, that's that's a a real issue. Um, and it, it, yeah, I, and I, none of this is to, you're absolutely right. We, we somehow need to get beyond this room, but we also need to, the, the power, the symbolism of the town taking action on the properties we do have is also a motivator for the rest of the community. This is important. Definitely. And, um, you know, it's interesting how you, you mentioned, Chris, how you, you know, like small building stock focus on the residents, because I said that to someone a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. like kind of that exact thing. Like we have like what a few buildings, we, yeah. we have a thousand <laughs> residential houses. Right. And over in Barnard, the energy coordinator they have helped them allocate some of their ARPA funding so that residents can get $2,000 from that directly from the town of Barnard. Arbor funding mm -hmm. and all they have to do is be weatherizing their house. Um, so that was something that the town energy committee was able to go right to the residents, give them that upfront cost. And I mean, that's just 
kind of what we're talking about, how to make happen, get these residential homes weatherized. Lenny, did you have something? I, your hand was up at one point. Yes, yes. Um, I um, have mentioned I something. Some... Oh, I'm getting an echo, sorry. And, and being a loan officer, I have mentioned this to some people who are coming in for home equity lines of credit and they're older and they don't have access to like communication. And my worry is that the, some of the people who could really benefit from this, how do we reach them? You know, there are people who are not, who don't get around very much, um, who are definitely not computer savvy, who, you know, how do we reach them with this information? You know, if we're talking about reaching the citizens of Bethel and getting them on board, we have, I'm thinking about, we just need to think about ways to reach those people that are not that accessible and who could really benefit from this. Yeah, I think that's why we talked about putting it in tax bills, because some people that maybe don't get the Herald or don't do uh -huh. Facebook or forum, it'll come in the mail to their house. Okay. Is that, yeah. you think that's good? Yeah, yeah mean, something like that. Something where yeah, they... Yeah. Yeah. Because if they're going to escrow their taxes, they may call you anyways. <laughs> yeah, this, <that's... laughs> I'll give you a stack. <laughs> so a okay. few years ago, we also did a, um, a program with Vital Communities focused on mobile home residents yeah. where energy committees volunteered to kind of be like ambassadors about those programs. So if someone wanted more information, they could um, give, drop their name into a survey with their phone number. And Scott on the energy committee, he followed up by calling them. And so he'd learn about their specific, what they needed and connect them with the specific program that could help them. Oh, that's nice. So maybe we could have something like that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice of him to do. And that's, that's more like personable and um, really like helps people when they can just say, you know, like, I don't know what to do. This is yeah. my problem. Yeah. And have, you know, an energy committee member possibly guide them to the right path. Yeah. I can see Scott being really good at that. I, yeah. Crazy idea, thinking completely out, out loud. Uh, what if we were to uh, hire a couple college students this summer to go door to door? Oh. <laughs> That's, you know, a, a way like to build capacity in micro gigs. <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we want you to know about these resources that are available. Yeah, My you know, college it has a uh, environmental studies class and put that on their um, curriculum. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, environmental law at the law school. The way they go yes. without pay, without us having to pay them. Well, I'm, we got that four thousand dollars. It's learning. It's learning. They're learning about rejecting. I know, I'm, but but <laughs> about the, about you know the door to door <laughs> campaign is the most effective there is. And um, down in Charlotte, they hired some interns to help with the solarization campaign. It is a good way to boost your capacity when you have limited resources. All right. I heard you say it was 10 of seven, so I should go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get home before dark. Dave Eddie's got his clock ticking over there. I can oh, hear Dave you. Dave here. I blew it. He, did <laughs> he mentioned the clock. He's done for it for the night. So but, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Everyone's welcome to come to our meetings or just reach out anytime. And, and I, I see you, if I, when you're looking at this stuff, do you look at what it's going to cost the homeowner to do this? And when they get done using just like solar panels, when Green Mountain started giving people the advantage of having their electric bill to put solar panels up, you are responsible for the destruction of the solar panels when they die. Yes. Mm -hmm. ah. Which cost them more than what they saved. Oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Because you've got to look at both well, sides sure. of it. Maybe you can get a darn good deal here. But you got to read the that's for sure. It may later on be the wrong thing, and you're going to pay to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be something to look into, too. Yeah. wonder how the recycling industry is going to evolve. Yeah. It's going in the desert right now. Big bowl. Humans are not it's doing anything right. right. That's where it goes right <laughs> now. It goes to the coal in the desert. It's going to cry. Well, the wind fire. Really. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah, yeah see right here. Nuclear fuel rods. Yeah, mine the yeah, lithium bigger. from those things. Right. Use them in the next Back thing. Thanks, <laughs> Paul. Drive careful. All right. We'll turn it over to public comment. If anybody has anything that's not on the agenda item this evening. <laughs> I realize you guys are running late and I'm oh, walking through here. But I just wanted to quick mention and thank 
thank the board for this kind of a town meeting critique visit. Um, I think because of uh, the, the continued transparency from the board, Reese um, has helped uh, the way the town meeting ran this year um, and the way it's run for the last few years. Um, so I wanted to thank you guys for continuing that um, good practice. Uh, thank you for running the show. That's right. You're welcome. You do the heavy lifting. <laughs> well, we had a few hiccups, but it wasn't. It was good. It was tolerable, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, so if any, the town meeting committee had been dormant over the last two years, of course, because we had no town meeting. Um, and I take uh, responsibility for not getting that fired up before town meeting this year. Victoria was really the... Uh, backbone of that committee and the driving force behind it. No excuse on my part. I should have been there to, to pick that up and, and go with it. But we have met since then on Thursday. We invited Therese in to get her uh, feedback on the meeting. We had a lot of good discussion. So I just want to let you know primarily that that committee is becoming active again. Um, myself or someone from the committee will be reporting to you throughout the next coming year. Uh, a couple of, one exciting thing, we're hoping to bring in some workshops um, during this time for, for town discussion, not only on town meeting, but other issues in town to try to get that town meeting feel. I think the discussion on the ballot, uh, Australian ballot, ballot item, I thought that was fantastic. We had people expressing their views for and against civilly in, and, you know, people on, Myself, hearing reasoning for, for and against saying that's great and and other side saying and that it makes sense. So that, that was fantastic. Um, so I'm hoping that the people there who think we're in, um, town meeting is antiquated, um, will hopefully take a little bit of that away and realize that it's more than just the vote. Um, the whole concept of town meeting goes farther than that. Okay. Um, so, just wanted to let you know that we're working. Uh, there'll be you'll be hearing things coming out from the committee in the future. And uh, if you do have something from being there at town meeting that either bothered you or you have a uh, something you, you think would work better, contact me. I think most of you might have my email from my uh, in the old Bethel Town phone book, my number's there and still active. So so call me, uh, get some information to Teresa if you can't reach me and we'll, we'll get it. But again, thanks very much. For... Were you thinking about with Rebecca, I, I'm gonna say her name is wrong, was it Clark or Day or? Susan, 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 Susan Clark. Susan Clark, okay. Yeah, um, you had mentioned that Chris yeah. about her and yeah. um, I don't wanna get too far down the road because it hasn't come to fruition quite yet, but. Uh, Rebecca is working with her for two other towns who are having the same discussion about Australian ballot, and uh, they're working on a workshop presentation for those two towns that we can incorporate if, if we want to. Um, that'll be something the committee will set up, and you guys won't have to be involved. I will have been knowing about it and more or less giving us the okay to go that route, but use the town or the town hall or whatever but yeah that that was exciting to hear um, mm -hmm. yeah it was it was interesting to, i think it'll be some good tools yeah I, I think overall you know that from seeing the school meeting the night before and the town meeting the day after i and you know again haven't had the meeting in a couple of years and you know first you have the organization of the of the town meeting which i think overall went really well um, and then we had a pretty good collective amount of individuals that not just came to the meeting, but but were there earlier than normal. There was a, a large group of people that were earlier there, you know, mm -hmm. nine o'clock, there was a lot of people there. Pies help. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, usually you're so, like, okay, it looks like they're coming in, so we're going to wait like five or ten more minutes. Like a majority of the people were there right. and they were mingling and, and talking and eating. And I think that was really good. So however we can try to tap into that and sustain that because it's fresh and new again. Yeah. Is, I think making it exciting, I think would be good. However we do that. You yeah. Know, well, Therese sent me an email but, today with some really good 
suggestions yeah. for the next next year so go yeah and, and and you know if you people watch it was it seemed to be a, a good variety of different people from different walks of life you know age-wise or whatever or, you know working not working retired whatever it seemed like there was a really good blend of of individuals there so however we can keep people um, tied in and and I, good. I don't want to go on about this but um we, we we say it's pure democracy because it's your vote you're there but it is a representative democracy as well, because even though we will never get every resident in town there, and just like we'll never get every resident to vote, but it's an excellent cross section. I mean, there are people there from all spectrum of life mm -hmm. that um, that participate and put their vote in. I got a question. Roughly, how many were there at the town meeting? Uh, we had 165. 165. 165 checked in. 165 checked in. Right. Uh, that's almost a little much as meant the number of people that went in and vote. Well, we went in and vote, so that's why. Yeah, yeah 202 voted and 165 were present at, or, or checked in at some point. Not saying they stayed the whole time, but yeah. checked so in. So the 40, oh, 40 people difference and then to put stuff into vote. Yeah. Well, if by voting for it, you're not going to be able to change, like one of them stepped down, but then he ended up taking another position. You wouldn't be able to do that if you're voting on them. Well, uh, they would have had to they, put in their consent yeah. of candidate form in advance. You're speaking about Paul Valley, yeah. But if they don't go to a meeting, they don't understand it and they don't know anybody that they should do it to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I thought it was nice. I agree with Rick. There was such a wonderful conversation. Nobody got upset. Nobody got, it was just nice that everybody got to say, and there was so many wonderful things that were said. I mean, we had a gentleman there who lives in Bethel who grew up in East Germany. And then for him to stand up and talk about, it was like, wow, you know, I never thought about that. I just, I just thought it was such a nice cross section of people and that everybody, you know, just was kind of like a great conversation and made you really think about everybody's point of view. Because we've had some heated ones. I thought it was nice. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, yeah. The topic was I remember the earlier days when I was, yeah, there was some yeah. heated ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was nice. Uh, but again, you guys have a lot of work to do. Thanks okay. very much. Thanks, Rick. Thank Take you. care. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Rick. <clears throat> the, only thing, the only thing you missed is you didn't have your gavel. Ah, I, I noticed that. that You're right. Yeah. You didn't have the gavel. That's, that's, that's the, the first thing, thing I said to Therese. I can't believe what I forgot. Yeah. So. Uh, so, uh, Owen had his hand up. Hi, everybody. Um, I am here representing the Equity and Inclusion Committee, um, and I wanted to I wanted to say thank you to Rick um, for your facilitation of town meeting. Um, and I think it was a really exciting, robust debate um, about that article. I also thought that it was really wonderful that you read the Declaration of Inclusion out loud um, to start off that meeting. I think that really, um, that was a big moment for me. It felt like a shift in um, how we think about inclusion in our town and really like the forward um, vocal expression of that intent to be inclusive. It meant a lot to me personally. Um, I also wanted to welcome Denise to the select board. We're really excited to work with you and um, thank you for your service. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to remind everybody of the um, equity or excuse me, the Bethel University trainings that the Equity and Inclusion Committee is doing. One of them is tomorrow night. It's about the history of slavery in Vermont and um, the meaning of Juneteenth. That's going to be online via Zoom um, from 6.30 to 8. And then we also have a training next week on Monday around supporting um, our community members and residents that are transgender and non-binary. And then at our usual meeting time on um, the last Tuesday of this month, uh, we'll just be doing a meet and greet to talk about what the Equity Inclusion Committee is and hear from constituents about their needs and thoughts around the issue. So uh, hopefully I'll see some of you there. That's all. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Owen. Sir. Any other public comments, um, Dave? Uh, you know, I was thinking after our, our town meeting about we were brought up and talked about civics and inclusion and whatnot, a lot of that. And I'm wondering 
how we as a board would feel about having a student, a high school student, sit here with us. They obviously wouldn't be able to vote, but to be part of the conversation, um, because that would include a, another group of people learning. Um, I think you, you need to teach, I, I think we should have a, mm. a semester of civics in high school anyway, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't. Uh, so I guess my question is, how would we feel about asking a student to be part of this board? It seems like if you reached out to the superintendent or the principal of the high school that they may be a social studies or history or, or it seems like one of the teachers would be able to recommend you know, um, a student that they thought would be good or maybe do they still I'm like 110 but do they still have student council is that like is yes, there a student council person you know what I mean or a member that could I know like, I did reach out to the school um at the beginning of this year about if they had any, what, anybody that would be interested in being a part of the select board or the school board um, and did not get anything back, but I could reach back out to them to find, find that out. Well, I was asking us to make sure that we're okay. You know, well, sure I think the thing is you might be okay, but you may not find the person. You know, well, like, we tried on school board. We had two people who showed up two months in a row and never saw them again. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what happened um, last, last year, school board meeting up until June, there was two people that were coming, but then they kind of just filled it out. So I would hope that there's somebody that's uh, in this uh, employee, this the staff that sees that one kid. Yeah. That is that kid that would come, and because he's interested, or he Absolutely. or she is interested. Yeah. No, I think that would be. I don't know. Wait. Oh, I think that would be great. Um. At least I, I mean I do. We did that was one thing that the town meeting committee talked about too was outreach and explaining more about town meeting and just how town government works and trying to get that information into the schools. Um so that may be something too that they end up expanding on. There used to be a program through the Secretary of State's office oh a long time ago, and I'm not sure if it's still around. I could find it, but <laughs> but um, it used to be, and it was something that you know you could go into the school and get civics the class. Not, mm -hmm. well, yeah, no, the time. Secretary of State's office um, when it was Dead Markowitz had a nice program to learn about this. But yeah, yeah. So the well, guidance that, counselors might oh, that's be able point. to guidance counselor ping somebody as well because they probably have more one on one with a guidance counselor. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, I can follow back up to find out if they have anybody that's interested. And then maybe we, as a board, if they, are, they do have people interested, maybe we can talk about it and see if we want to bring some on I know when I brought it up to them, they were also looking for, and I'll probably say the wrong identity, but for the, um, I think they call them monitors at the at the Capitol building that oh, runs on pages. pages. pages sorry. <laughs> so, but they, I, I believe they didn't have anybody that would wanted to do that. Um, so I can, but I can follow back up and see if they have any any interest in anybody that wants to be any part of any type of government. All this stuff. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else? No, so I don't there. see anything. So we we will move on. One thing I kind of noticed after the fact that we um, approved the agenda. Mm -hmm. Would anybody on the board have? Any issues if we move the rules and procedures to the first thing that we do rather than oh. do a bunch of things and then do the rules yeah, and procedures? Sure. I just copied it the same way I did okay. it last year. Well, just, I whipped out I was, March 20th. I should have thought that. I did according to the rules. Same, but March, if we move the rules and procedures first? No, because yeah, you guys Dave, okay with that? Yeah, because yeah, Dave has some. Yeah, you can do anything we want at the board. Because right. <laughs> Dave had some questions or comments. Are we good with that? So we'll just. Unless nobody has objection, we're just going to move the um, rules and procedures piece of it to the beginning. Um, <laughs> so the only thing on rules and procedures, so um, so the rules and procedures is a few things. So, I mean, we, we conduct our ways as Robert's rules of order and the open meeting laws. So those are things that, that, that we won't be setting or changing um, law, but we do have... Um, Procedures here, um, 
as a uh, board, so like things that we had last year, Denise would like um, to limit public comment to three to five minutes per person. So let's say if we ever got in the situation where there's a hot topic, um, where a lot of people want to speak, but it also gives the board still leeway to extend by a majority of vote a person's time. If there's, Thanks, Mary. Take uh, care. Do that. <laughs> so those are some of the things like that we we adopt okay. as adding above and beyond. One thing that has come up a lot with Therese is is the motions and seconds yeah, yeah. thing. So currently the way our rules and procedures is that a motion is made but is not required a second. So as a board, do we want to just do motions only with no seconds? Or do we want to amend the board rules to have a second? I like leaving it as is. We can still second. I think when we talked about this in the past, we talked about the fact that the, the motion being made, when a second is made, it sort of gives an indicator to the rest of the group that, okay, there's at least two people. So if there's going, if a third person's ready to vote in the same direction, then you're, you're passing it. And so it's kind of a, a litmus test. But I like leaving it as like, we don't have to have it, and yet we still can have it so that we kind of have that feedback loop to each other of like, Dave made a motion and I've seconded it. It kind of indicates to the rest of you, this is the direction it's moving in versus not knowing, right? And so by leaving by leaving it the way it's written, we allow ourselves that flexibility. We don't need to have a second. We're not required to, but we still can. There's nothing saying we can't. My gripe has only been consistency. If I'm taking the minutes in one motion, there's one person and nobody seconds it. And then the next motion, there's a motion in a second. Frankly, it makes it look like I have bad minutes. So <laughs> it drives me crazy. I'm like, stick with the pattern. You're either going to do minute, it one way or both the ways. Minutes do only, the minutes should only report the mover. Well, I'm just, yes. But as someone who's... Yeah, if, yeah, if there is a second, there's a second. It's got to be on there. But, Listen, and, we've been doing a lot, so that's all. The only great yeah. that was my only issue is just my, my keep curiosity. consistent. I don't care how you do it, Dave. Yes or no, but my curiosity and I just this just came to this slow brain was you may uh, someone made a motion at, at the school board and it didn't get second, so it died. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing you might want to think about mm -hmm. if you don't have a second, and there's only one of us that likes it. If you only have to have a motion, then we all have we have to vote. But if we have to have a second, and it's dead, yeah, it's dead. Oh, I see you what you're move saying. It and nobody seconds it. It's dead. And I would I would say if we're leaning towards having consistency, then my my preference would be that we do have a second mm -hmm. because I I think it is it is kind of a nice way to know you know where we're where we all are. Um, and and yeah. I think I think where and and I don't know I don't I don't remember the rules for maybe they didn't have rules back then but you know when there was a a three person board obviously if you made a motion in a second then that was the majority of your vote, oh right? yeah I, I don't mean, know how they would so have like done it. with the five person board you know uh, I think you can get a you know have that second and still not have the majority vote right. in yet right 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 uh, where the three person board you kind of locked in at that point right so right yeah made it. So I don't know. That was the only thing that kind of stuck out to me was Teresa's is always. Uh, I am on you about that. <laughs> honest about that. So coming around the gate, do we want to amend it to say that we would require a second? It sounds like Teresa would like us to go one way or the other, <laughs> either to make a motion that doesn't need a second or make a motion and require a second. So yeah. to be consistent, what, what would we like to do as a body? Require I, I a second. A second. 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 I second, second that. Second. Second. The second. <laughs> okay. the third. Yeah. So Jeannie maybe good so, with the second. Second. Seconds. And so we're just going to. We're just going to say require. A in terms of discussion, I would just point out that uh, one of the reasons sometimes for putting something before the body is to get a recorded vote. Right. And if if there is just a motion. It does not die for lack of a second, but it does require then a recorded vote. And I, sometimes that's important to know. But a second I'm not, still gives a vote. I think if you have no second, the uh, set, the recorder could say one for and four against and be correct. Well, yep. I'm just... You could, you could re, I, I think you could get... You could record it's it that way, and it would be. Does it talk about correct? It. I'd have to look. Like, 
can somebody ask for? I was just thinking, like, with the Robert Rules of Order, can somebody ask for a majority vote, even if it's not seconded? You know, probably. What I, mean? I would have to look. I, I don't know. The man that asked left. Just left. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, there might be something look. in the rules that states like you could ask for, like a board member could ask for a majority majority vote. Or you could just seconded. say to the chair, "Hey." Could we just get a consensus or how do people feel about it and kind of walk away with a consensus? But so well, I guess see. you could put it into, you know, bullet point number five. We could say motions made by members Report. of the body require a second. However, any select board member can ask for a majority vote. I think there's somebody that said like that. somewhere. It says saying. a motion will only pass if it receives the votes of a majority of the total membership of the body. Right, but there's something here where a, a member can. I read it today. They can request a roll call vote. Oh, that's right. Yes. So <laughs> even if your motion so didn't, you could request. Where's that at, Dave? Somewhere in here. Yeah, I remember reading that as well. Isn't it? Is it number? It's number four under meetings. E four. It says. Yeah. Um. Member of the body, blah, blah, blah. When the meetings meet and is able to hear and be heard through the meeting, whenever one or more members attend electronically, voting that is not unanimous must be done by a must roll call. Must be, but I think yeah, I read that yeah. you can ask for it. But I could also look up Robert's rules and let you know. Yeah, no, number seven is any member of the body may request a roll call. Oh, there you go. Um, when one or more members so, attend. So then we have a mechanism in there. We don't. Okay. I don't know if I can add a discussion point or not, but in my years of experience, at least having it in the record that it was moved and not seconded shows everybody that it was heard. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Yeah, we would definitely do that. I agree with that. If somebody made a motion, there was no second. I totally agree that we put it in the minutes. You're right. That's so communication. But so, so it looks like number through. five and seven work out. So, so if we put five in there, that will state that um, we'll just that it does out. require a second. Mm -hmm. So re restrict out. Um, do not. Do not. Yep. And then you know, bullet point seven allows the body, yep. the member, to request a roll call vote. Sure. But okay. but it's still it still kind of almost talks about that somebody's at, attending electronically, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, but you finish with seven. A roll call vote is required for votes that are not unanimous. So if if we if you say all those in favor say aye, and I don't say aye, right. This says we now need a roll call vote. That says only if you if one or more is attending electronically. Right. So that's why I, I wonder like does, yeah. does that become any part member of, this of the body may yeah. I I don't know. Like I, I think it's yeah. a separate any okay. member of the body yeah. may require request a roll call vote, period. Like added the addition. Yeah, I think it's an addition. That's been a newer evolution. I think so. Okay. So the way I would read that is at any point in time, anybody could, or any member of the body can request Let's a roll call. Let's get one PSA three twelve A two L, and then we can read it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you Dave read really it wants to be here late tonight. He does. He's working. He's I, don't have to work. I don't have to work. The other thing too is um, you got Paul's name on the sign sheet. I know I did because is with a, what you adopted in twenty twenty two. Gotcha. So it says if you're going to readopt, I would have updated. Okay. It next time. Does it? Dave Eddy had the same question when he called me today. Exact yeah. same question. And I Dave Eddy has a couple before, notes. Before you move off this, he has thing, some notes. a couple more. Okay. Do we need to on it? Yes. No, when, once you do the whole yet. thing, Dave has a couple of edits. Oh. On C organization paragraph three. Wait, but we haven't voted on the. Are you going to vote on them singularly or the whole group? No, we haven't voted on the amendment to number five yet. I think no. you can just do the whole thing as one. Yeah, we can do the whole thing as amended the at the thing. end. If, if we, if, if yeah. we, so everybody's good with number five. Yeah, that's what we did last time. Okay. All right, Dave. Uh, a majority of the members of the body shall constitute a quorum. If a quorum of the members of the body is not present at the meeting, no meeting shall take place. I'm suggesting that that says no action shall happen. Right, and it, because we're you know yeah. it, no meeting it, it depends on how you interpret, but I interpret it as okay. We're not all here. Go home. Mm -hmm. so if, yeah. If there's three of if there are two of us here and we got something to talk about, we can talk about it. So you we want can't decide anything, but we can talk about. It. So you want it to say uh, is not present at a meeting, 
comma, no action may be taken. Yes, okay. right. Because you don't need a quorum to start a meeting. You just need a quorum to, to take what's, action in a meeting. What's the open meeting law say? Um, it depends About on... meeting... <laughs> If if a more than if three or more of us are in a, we're talking about no quorum. If you and I can just talk on the street about all anything we want and not right. tell anybody we're talking about. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, no, if three. If, all right. But if three of you were at a energy committee meeting, you're not there as the select board, right. so you can make a decision but, about anything. But but we're sure still it's still three. That's a very good that's a majority. Um, yeah. uh, I'll go home. <laughs> I just, it's not a warm meeting so yeah and you're this I'm, I'm just trying to oh, that makes sense. Yep. so i'm a member of john q public and i wanted to come and and say something and but there well there no well okay there's no meeting so they need to under so anything. we would need to make sure that john that that person understands that they are not speaking to the whole board. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think the majority of the time we know in advance if there's yeah. no quorum, so we would just reschedule. But if it, someone, you know, Lindley forgot, say, for example, and it didn't show and you didn't have a never, quorum, never then we we could tell, then we would definitely tell people, look, this isn't um, a legit meeting. Yeah, so just, you're right. I'm just, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, of all the options. Technically, the implications. Yeah, <laughs> I just see it. No action. Yeah. So the open meeting law says the law applies when there is one, a quorum of a public body, two, involved in a discussion or taking action, and three, the subject matter of the discussion is one over which the body has authority or responsibility. That's the way it reads right from. So it requires a quorum present. Yeah, okay. see, that's that's what kicks it all off. So it says the law applies when there is one a quorum of a public body. Yeah. Two involved in a discussion or taking action. Okay. And three, the subject matter of the discussion is one over which the body has authority or responsibility. It's interesting that it doesn't say duly warned either. Like in your case, you can't. No, it doesn't. Know. But that's interesting. Well, that could. Even though it has meet, to be. You'd have to meet all three. So that kind of takes that into consideration. You had others, right? Yeah, Dave? I got, I got, uh, <laughs> Dave has a handful. I got two more, but Chris has already covered one of them. On in E meetings, paragraph four. Um, as, as of where we are, in this time, uh, second line going to third line, uh, so long as the member identifies him or herself when meeting is convened, I would think it would uh, be appropriate for us to change him or herself to themselves. We should ask Owen if that's the right. Sure. Would Owen, that, is would that, that, that the right everybody, Owen? phrasing, Owen? That works. You, huh? Yes, yeah, that works. that works. Okay, all right. Is that what you are you happy with that? Yeah. So okay. you're just saying st strike him and her and put with themselves. Is that right? Because right? I feel loose. Is it and them themselves or? is inclusive of every anybody that could be okay. them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long okay. as they can walk and talk and breathe. Yeah, so perfect. themselves. Oh. Hmm. All right, they don't have to walk. Okay, and they don't have to talk. They okay, they do have to breathe. You do have to <laughs> breathing's essential. All right. I feel yeah, like you it. had one more. Oh, I thought you had another. No, oh. yeah, there was the Denise thing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so did we have any other suggestions or amendments to the select board procedure? So I just want to make sure we have the right corrections in here, and then we can just make one. Yeah. So an agreement on that first one. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going to read back through and make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, so yeah. under under organization, three. we have number three, which will be amended by adding by removing by removing uh, no meeting will take place to no action may be taken. And then on paragraph five, 
uh, under organization, we are striking out um, the do not. So motions made by members of the body require a, a second. So we're taking out the do not. And then under meetings, paragraph four, we are replacing him or her with themselves. Okay. Yeah, I think you can just you could just do one motion to adopt the rules of procedure as, as amended. amended. Yes. Yeah. I move to adopt the rules. Uh, what are we talking about here? The rules of procedures. Rules of procedure as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 See, they do the first and the second. Day, like yeah, that. I do. Well, <laughs> well, it's <laughs> consistent. <laughs> Although it does. It makes right. minutes look fun. So we are good with that. So now we'll get into. Um, so some of these things, Denise, is this um, designating. So a few things tonight is designating, you know, the the source of media that we use, the paper, the um, the spots and physical locations of which um, things are displayed for meeting uh, meeting notices. Um, and it's required by statute that they do it in this yeah. meeting. So. Okay. So the first one is to make a motion to de designate the Herald as the new newspaper of record so moved second. second and we've established that that one is what else can you use better it? area <laughs> yeah. i mean valley mm -hmm. news is probably your next yeah and it's not as regional so okay so all in favor aye. aye and then behind that is the motion to designate the town clerk's office the town manager's office and bethel public library as physical locations to post meeting notices so moved second okay all in favor aye, aye. you had a quote i was just curious that the, it's always i've always wondered that the town manager's office and the town clerk's office in the same building yeah, i've often wondered so that's, that too that's okay. but two separate entrances i know <laughs> two separate identities i've wondered the same hey, thing hey. but <laughs> everything is on that end of town do you have anything up where is it You're just, just a seems like the wish right. to me that uh, yeah. I know. we're missing somebody we're well missing some people it's hard because we don't have access to i mean you know, you can't guarantee that so if we did it at mascoma then but there's people that don't bank there yeah. and then if you do i'm not sure the post office doesn't i don't believe allow that sort of thing right so you kind of your options are limited. That's why we put it now on Front Porch Forum and have it on our website, and mm -hmm. so people can can okay. find the agenda. Okay. But I agree. I I thought it was weird when it, I'm like it's the same building. I I thought it was right. weird. But if we had a another place that was, then it would. Because I'll be honest too, it takes up a lot of space. We need like an entire bulletin board. By the time we post all the zoning stuff and all the meetings, and I mean, it's a lot of space to ask someone to give up to as well. Because we had a we had an messy. outdoor board on Richardson store for a while. Yeah, and, and, there were, and I don't so remember much. seeing much town stuff on that. It was mostly people uh, sale or something right. else, but it wasn't much town stuff ever posted there. Yeah. I wonder I if put one of my posters there. Post office again. I know maybe I know that they don't allow for profits to post on there, so you can't advertise on there. But the bulletin board there is fairly empty most of the time. Yeah. And so I just wonder if they would be open to that. Yeah, it might be. You, you know, maybe ask. that maybe being a federal entity, they are excluded to only not a profits board. Yeah. And we do when we do supplements like bonds have to go in five places. I think that's a place yeah. that we use. Well, we can ask. Yeah, I mean, maybe even if, the capacity is the issue. Yeah, it could be. And in the in the meantime, we could still we can always yet, add them. We can well. always add or just do it. So mm -hmm. I'll ask. I will ask. We could always get in our car and go to everybody's house. Good. <laughs> like the newspaper. Just don't put them in the mailbox. That's right. Oh yes, that that's against the law. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Tampering. Okay, I'll ask. All right. Do I get a bulletproof vest too? <laughs> and then typically we have one board member who who will go in and sign all the weekly um, AP and payroll um, pieces before 
I don't want to say we blindly sign them at, <laughs> at select board level, but we do. Like usually one of our colleagues will double check everything and then and then we sign at the meetings. So um it takes it takes a few minutes. Paul's done it for I years. Know, I I've it. done it for years. I did it once. You did it. Done it. probably 10 minutes or 10, so. 15 minutes at the end of the day. How big the pay order is. Paul got really good at it because he did it all the time. So he saw the vendors, he knew who yeah. what payroll was. So I think in the beginning it's gonna take somebody a few minutes, but once you get going, you know, Paul always kind of knew what to look for. So I think it's like anything. Once you get going, you'll be. I mean, Pam yeah. tried really hard to to foil me. The <laughs> she had things in incorrect <laughs> orders. I had to ask some questions. She I tried hard. That's right. So is that a once a week thing or? Yep. And we do AP one week and payroll another week. I know Denise said you might be interested. Yeah, in I'd be interested in doing that. And um, it's. So, but yeah, it's once a week, somebody does AP or one week it's AP and one week it's payroll. This week it's payroll. And um, yeah, and I just, I just did AP. Yeah. 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 yeah so it's, it's, so Paul was, like I said, he was, he had a good response. How many years did you do it, Paul? All six? Yep. Right from the get go. <laughs> I'd be happy to talk to anybody who wanted to go over, you know, what I did or what, you know, yeah. it doesn't take very long. You spend more time visiting than you do working on the other stuff. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Paul had mentioned that to me a time or two, <laughs> if I would be interested. And I said I would be. There you go. You just, you Don't know. have to tell Dave twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> have a motion move, out here. Move to authorize Denise. Second. Okay. Mm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to move to nominate Paul, but yeah. Hmm. Um, and then uh, let's see. Yeah. Next up, we have is the resolution to warn and hold a special town meeting to vote by Australian ballot. So that's In regards to the bond. Yep. So good news was obviously the bond. You know, you blew it. I, yes, you thank you so much. Yes, that's Chris Three Jarvis. I text him to say, Hey, did you happen to see the votes? He calls me. It's like, you know, blow it. I'm like, Thank you so much. I said, Just blew your chance. <laughs> yeah, I heard that I could hear Pam giving me a hard time in the background. So we'll have the re vote or, or the actual vote on April 18th at the town, at the school, excuse me, and uh, for the water bond. So the resolution is clear on we have to call it a special town meeting. So it gives you in your packet, you had the resolution to warn and hold special town meeting to vote by Australian ballot on issuance of general obligation bonds or notes. Also showed you what the special town meeting warning looks like, which is very similar to what you saw before. And it's the same wording. Um, obviously, the Australian ballot is the same wording, except for at the header says special town meeting warning. So we will need a motion Move to approve adopt the resolution it's sad to me that we've got to the point where we have to have seven pages of legal mumbo jumbo to say water budget i know uh, we'll no second that it'll only get longer as the yeah. time yeah. comes all right so all in favor aye, aye. aye. And... so you can also sign this and then i have to put it in the newspaper <laughs> so here we go i gotta can you sign it and pass that around here at the top? So thank you very much. Apologize again for the mistake. So I'm going to work on beating my 200. If only 202 people voted. I want more than that this meeting. So I'm going to be like <laughs> spreading you the need word. Two so there. Yeah, you need a second um, motion. I just not sure we technically do, but I want one in the minutes just yeah. for the, to approve the <laughs> special town meeting warning the and book. Australian ballot. Since they're two separate, the Australian special town meeting warning is here. Now it's going to door to door. No mileage. Grace, huh? you're going to go door to door. No mileage. I'm sorry. No mileage. Okay. <laughs> e bike. It's just a matter of principle now. E bike. E bike. E -bike. That's right. Dave Algegetti has an e bike. So, and then we just need another motion to. Yep. For the special town meeting morning and Australian ballot. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Right. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Don't Thank forget you. to send that to our designated I, uh, newspaper of record. Worry about it. 
Just reminding me, that's all. That's right. Now that they are official. Yep. I will be on it. All right. And the next two is we had some uh, work that we bid out a week ago or so. Yep. A week or two ago that Therese wants to go over. <laughs> yeah, I do. So we, as I had said to you before, I had a couple projects out. So the Christian Hill Road project, we did it in two pieces, obviously. So the dirt work is one bid, and then the paving was a second bid. So we had, I put in your packet, the bidders and where they came in and any notes um, that I made. Obviously, somebody had an incorrect bid sheet. And you can see the prices. Um, uh, so you can see all the prices, excuse me, for the total bid, as well as how much it was. And I broke it down by pricing. So the only big, the only difference really, which seemingly is negligent, is the type of stone used for the under drain. But so the low bidders would be for this would be WB Rogers for 138375 for the dirt work and Pike for the paving for 231 So once it's awarded, we'll get probably get Pike and WB together to work out a schedule since we have to maintain once Pike comes in, they is the word reclaim. Yeah. Is they do the reclamation, they come in and take up the pavement. So once that happens, then you want WB to start. And then in between WB finishing and Pike paving, the town maintains the road. So we want to try to tighten that schedule up as much as we can. So um, we'll put the two of them together to work that out. What, uh, just a, I had a question. Uh, what does Pike do with the reclamation? It goes into the road base. Road fills it right into the road base. Yeah. I, I guess the question I had on that, it, and I think I brought it up to you before. So the Christian Hill project. So if we award both of these, how does that compare to the budget that we had set? I think that we, I looked back after, and I think we had around 400 Mm -hmm. um, I think if I was, I did go back and eyeball it. So together we were under what we thought. I know I need to add, um, I'm going to make a deal with WB Rogers. I want to do add another culvert that we didn't do as part of the base. There's a culvert that you and Morgan talked about, Dave, to add that. Um, I also, <clears throat> excuse me, have Richard and Aaron Perez of Rural Water coming uh, tomorrow and but they're supposed to come tomorrow. We'll see. And um, there is, we believe the water line crosses Christian Hill. It goes up, like Christian Hill comes like this. There's the old part of Christian Hill and the water line's there. And then we believe, uh, or we know it crosses. We're gonna try to figure out where, because once we have it open up, we'll replace that piece of water line. It doesn't it make goes sense. It all the way to Acres. So it's gotta go across the road somewhere. Exactly. So um, there, Richard was in today pulling record drawings and looking and he had- locator? Excuse me. Some we had a locator one time, water pipe locator. Well, that's who's coming tomorrow, rural water, because yeah, we had I don't know, but the bottom line is that or the problem becomes is that we believe cherry lane is plastic pipe. So it depends where the connection is and all that. So but we do have some maps. So um and Richard was looking at at those today because um so if we're going to dig up and do this to Christian Hill and then say cherry lane becomes part of our net phase three. I don't want to look mm -hmm. like a fool by cutting into beautiful pavement, you know, in five years or less, less than five years. I don't want to do that. So we'll locate that as well. So. And then the grant that we got for Christian Hill, was mm -hmm. that two one, 175 or was that the new 200? We got 200,000. Okay. So the new that. grants are over 200,000. Yeah, we got okay. 200,000 for paving. I think our match was two, was 25. So we were pretty close to okay. covering all of the paving. So that, yeah. that 200 will go towards the budget at 400,000. Yeah, the, the basically the grant we got is almost going to cover our paving, the whole paving thing. The state just changed the, the paving. Well, they call them paving grants, but they're... Yes. You can do some other things on paving, but they're normally one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. But um, due to the inflated cost of things, yeah. the state just put out late last year. They switched it to doing two twenty-five now mm -hmm. to cover that. So I didn't know if ours was. I think we on, got on the old one or if it was the new one. But it I sounds like we got the new one. We got two hundred thousand, and then we had yeah. to pony up twenty-five thousand. So it actually yeah. almost covered the bid. So yeah. which was. Okay. 
I was gonna happy great. about that. And then too, obviously, when I say we're going to award this bid, you know, the way it is WB, we all have some questions about what's really under there. So we are hoping that we don't have to put in all 2000 linear feet of the under drain. Um, so there may be some savings there, or maybe we roll that into additional gravel, but it really kind of depends. So I've heard every story, I swear about, you know, what's up there. It's ledge. No, it's clay. No, it's it. I, I, we aren't going to we'll know find out. once it comes out, once it's up, then we'll be able to see and, and the road foreman will work with, you know, WB and Pike to say, mm -hmm. okay, here's some places we maybe need to box out and do some work too. So I can give you a couple of places. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, and we'll be able to see it. That's the problem. The last right? time that was done, see. they did the, um, they didn't do it the way they do it now. They took the, they re reclaimed the pavement, took it down there, and they, they mixed it with yeah. something else, and then they put down a. They did an alternative treatment, like but a, that that lasted as long as any pavement I've ever seen, mm -hmm. considering the road, the trucks that run that road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the other thing is the reason this is a little more is we're going to put down, I believe it was five inches. Going or thicker with the pavement. Pavement the for that. To so. compensate for it. So a normal town road is four inches. When you get to the state roads, they're like nine inches of pavement. So we're doing five. I heard the interstate was 14. Mm, well, maybe it was. No, yeah. But. It did one year when they dug down when I was driving up to Barry, And if you missed that four. passing lane, it was... Yeah. it was down there so yeah but the idea is for us within reason is to fix the drainage issues that we have on that road because a lot of the reason why the road failed now is because of drainage there's Dra drainage and, and, the, the, so road and the road base is too narrow yeah, yeah. there's so much water pushed, pushed the yeah. road out in those so, and you know so re-ditch it if there's any soft spots in the road within reason we're mm -hmm. going to fix those or not we yeah. rogers would fix yeah. those um so we hope to have a lot better product this time around that'll last longer yeah. so but there, there's but there's a lot of things up there there's ledge there's someone said there's a, a spring that runs through the air there's yeah. a bunch of different next road the uh, hill there is yeah and yeah I, there's a bunch yeah. of different things someone else was like mysteries a, a play up there and then i'm like so, oh. and then someone else is like are you gonna yeah. blast or let us hammer it i'm like no if it's ledge it's snake yeah, we're it, not doing anything it, yeah. so there was a uh, so I guess I'm just more curious than anything else. Wait and if, see. If we see Hoffa, we'll know what's so, <laughs> one way to find out. Road, yeah. road closed. Yeah. Yeah, the road will be open for, you know, obviously we can't divert um, Rock of Ages. So they're trying, and which everybody knew we were very clear. I was very clear about that pre bid. So um, hopefully homeowners will divert because you know the how. Road, the road should last a lot longer because we had Irene came down that road. Oh yeah, yeah they did. Shortly after it was redone. Oh really? Oh, there yeah. I didn't and think the about that. The trucks come down there almost nose to tail. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, all the guard trucks. Yeah. yeah, and then the extra one they had that came off at the top of the yeah. hill in the interstate. Yeah, to get it go off on the interstate, but yeah. there for yeah. a month or so they would just. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> we should have got some FEMA money for that. Should they should have? Yeah. yeah, they should have. Just like they should have for Sand Hill. So we so we'll need um, two motions on the pit on the pike one. I'll sustain from voting on it. However, I don't normally vote on it anyways, unless there's a tie. But nice. if there happens to be a happens to be a tie, you guys are just gonna have to fight it out. Yeah, duke it out. <laughs> so <laughs> pair up teams and uh, do it part one. Move to approve WB Rogers for the amount of one hundred and thirty eight thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Then we'll just need one for the paving portion of that. Move to approve Pike for the amount of $231,337.50. Don't forget the 50 cents. Mm -hmm. That's right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we're good with those. And then the last one we have is the right road, Gilead Road. Yep. Project. So, um, so I had... So it is uh, the Bellavance Land Works for a price not to exceed $35,256. I spoke to Brock of Bellavance and we talked and I'm going to get back to him this week about the culvert install. As you can see, it was just a huge number. And I called him and said, look, I may pull, I could pull the whole bid because I have $25,000 in grant for this project. I said, well, I'm going to well, the town will grade it. We're going to have to cut back some of the work. Are you still willing, you know, to work with me? He was like, absolutely. And I said, can you 
take a peek at your culvert work. I said, it's really interesting. And he, then he, and he emailed me back after we hung up and he was like, Hey, can you send me a copy of my bid sheet? I want to look at my numbers and make sure I didn't like, I work on it over here. If I didn't, you know, put a different number in. And I told him, I said, look, I have, this is what I have for grant. I'm not saying I'm going to cut you to that. We'll see what the work is and nine with everybody else, but we need, you know, we'll talk about that price. So he was very much open to that. And I think it'd be nice to have somebody, um, you know, that, that number is just way yeah. out. And, and once I sent him the bid stuff, he was, that's, I actually, I sent him this tabulation. And then he emailed me. He was like, Hey, can you give me a favor and send me my bid sheet? And I'm going to look at it and I'm going to give him a call this week. So we'll, I will work with him. So that's the max, but obviously I plan on taking some stuff out of the bid. And I told him that I said, I don't have the money to do all this. And he was fine with it. So we'll negotiate a price with him. Not to exceed. Yep. Yes, sir. So out of that, so we're eating 10,000 higher than like I, said, I just anticipated. No, I just said, I'm not going to, I'm going to take out the grading. There's 2,800 and I'm, he's looking at his $9,500 price. I basically, I'm just, I'm saying I needed a price for the motion, but I already told him I'm negotiating out some of this work that I only have 25,000. I didn't get that sheet. It was in your packet. It's, yeah. Third. I was wondering what you guys were talking about. Third, and you can't see that. That's too small, but. The only that, one I got was this one. Oh, I there was two. Yeah, I was wondering what you were talking about because I'm like, Denise, that's not adding up. Oh, I only got one. one. Oh, Denise only got one too. Yeah, so it must be when I was photocopying. Yeah. You two are the only ones. Trying that to slide it by us, I see. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting here going, well, these numbers are definitely not the numbers. These are from the Christian yeah. one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and you're talking about them like, well, the hell is she talking about? Yeah, no, sorry about that. I. That's photocopy. You took okay. that photocopy. So packets. once we take out the grading. So there, so we're at 35. I'm yeah. taking out the 2,800 and I told him he has to look at this number okay. because I told him, I said, look, I only have $25,000 oh. to do this project. I'm not saying I'm going to cut you all the way to 25, but we're going to look at these numbers. But I said, that number is out of whack. I sent him this bid and then he emailed me back and said, oh boy, Therese, can you send me my bid? And I haven't spoke to him since. So I needed a number for the motion but I've already told him I was taking out grading and that I only have 25,000 to do the mm -hmm. project. So I'm going to cut him back. But he was the, he was the low bidder. Well, over once you take one, out that. that one, because they didn't have a signed contractor page and they didn't, their references were, I have employees okay. that have done other projects. Well, wasn't the question. Right. <laughs> so anyways, so, um, so yeah, sorry about that. To me, okay. Chris. Yeah. All sorry. right. Well, now we're on the same page. Yes. Yeah. Um, trying to figure out when I was kept shuffling through them. Is it double sided on something? I'm yeah. Like, I've never seen that anywhere. Oh, uh, so. no. I so moved to approve Bellavance Landworks for an amount not to exceed the price of $35,256. I like $3,500 better. I I, with that. I'll second it. <laughs> it's feeling good. <laughs> it was good. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Town manager's report. So I was talking about this for a few minutes before the meeting started, but just to reiterate it, um, I was speaking today to Jason Booth. He's the one of our engineers from Aldrich and Elliott. And by October, 2024, we need to do a water line service line inventory. Um, we are eligible for, mm -hmm. you know, 46 or $56,000. So we can hire someone to do it. And it's a grant and then basically you do the work you pay the person they give you the money and um so which is fine uh i talked to him a little bit about it today i'm gonna have a longer conversation tomorrow with richard but then he said uh there's a next step the next step is that the epa is going to require service lines that are galvanized to be upgraded mm -hmm. and he isn't sure about the money but there's money attached to it he thinks that's coming from the epa and my I my comment was aren't they aren't they in for a legal battle because our ordinance and I bet you everybody else's water ordinances or a lot of them say that after the curb stop, curb stop it's the responsibility of the homeowner and he said he did not know yet the language is not out there of course to say are they going to have the homeowners replace it and then give the homeowner the money are they going to give the town the money to have us replace it for the homeowner and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, great. So he said he didn't know for sure, but that was coming down the pike. And I'm like, you know, Sounds is that going to be, well, um, you know, my concern is if we're going to move towards phase three. I know what mine is because yeah. I just did mine yeah. a few years ago. So I know exactly what mine is good enough. That's what I say, Dave. And so yeah. he's saying that part of this. They can't, they can't make. Part of the service line inventory. Well, what they, I bet you what they, 
what they could do, which would be just as ugly, would be to give us a pot of money for people to basically to hire a contractor to offer this service. I could just see it's the yeah. EPA. It's going to be. I can't see it's how gonna they. Be, it's not going to be great. That. So I don't know either. I think that they they have to be smart enough to realize there'd be a legal battle. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the wording will be. Well, just Dave Eddy as a citizen, I'm really concerned about what's going on in Montpelier, mm -hmm. like the Affordable Heat Act that we have crash and burn for two years. Yeah. Because they didn't have all their I's dotted and T's crossed. They didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, so, because they were- They didn't know all of them. Because Dick was talking about it before get passing and then being in this kind of bubbly hold for two years and- and um, but one of the things he also had mentioned that I have not had a chance to look into yet. I'm not sure if any of you are aware of that, aware of it, but he had mentioned about developing and how they're working with Act 250. So the towns would have to apply for an umbrella permit mm -hmm. for the developers. And, you know, to me, that just screams unfunded mandate because I don't know what that would entail, how much it would cost, who would we pass the cost on to. But I was going to ask you, Dave, are you familiar or any of you familiar with Act 250, this Act 250 umbrella permit? Never heard of it. Me Never either. heard of it till the town meeting. Yeah, so I was ready to raise my hand, but I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait and, and ask. But um, so I'm going to reach out to Dick McCormick, um, or not Dick McCormick. I'm going to Google it and figure out what it is and what it entails. And then if, um, you know, write to Dick and or Kirk and if it's, yeah, I don't Something understand what he's just, talking about because he said that Act 250 right now does not govern um, renewable energy projects. No, he so, was just talking about development in general when he was well, talking about and, doing the housing industry. And if somebody wanted to come put in a big housing development, then he's saying instead of them going through Act 250 so they right. could fast track it, we get, I never like that. The we, town would get an umbrella. We're going to get that would meet wait, certain criteria. I don't know. But to me, it was like more money. I, Time we Act two hundred and fifty is a double edged sword. Yeah, it's without. it's good and it's bad, and that's the, that's the tricky thing with it is, it's it's thorough, <laughs> but it's very time consuming, and and so, all right, I mean, well, there's arguments for both sides of it. So well, I'll reach out to like Kevin Geiger maybe or somebody mm -hmm. and ask him if we'll figure out what this Act two hundred and fifty umbrella permit is. I wasn't sure if any of you had heard of it. I had not, and <laughs> Frank, I don't think I want to know because. That could be really time consuming and what's the cost and yeah none of the things i like <laughs> our time and our money <laughs> that was it everything else was in the report i think we covered it so okay uh, the yeah. alternate meeting dates oh yeah oh i guess i didn't have about that all right sorry about that the um Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to be on vacation from April 27th to May 9th. So <clears throat> I just want to put this out there. Either We could either skip or reschedule the May 8th meeting. Um, we could reschedule to May 15th, or we could, you know, I'm thinking as we wait a little bit longer in April to see what our schedule looks like, because you may be, you know, we may say, look, we don't need that meeting. There's not much there, so we could just do our regular one meet, we do a meeting in May. Um, and then I know Chris has a conflict with our June meeting, um, 26. So if anyone has conflicts with that meeting date, let me know. Um, otherwise we'll run it. Someone else will just have to act as chair for that meeting. Um, but if there's other people have conflicts and we're not gonna have a quorum, we'll reschedule that meeting. So maybe we'll just address these as we um, get closer, but I just kind of wanted to put it out there. And just to throw it out there, May does have five Mondays, so okay. You know, so we could always, the you know, ninth, do the third. yeah, the ninth. You need the so third the instead fifth. of the second yeah. or fourth. Monday. Yeah. So that you you know could yep meet on a different Monday if we yeah. want to do that. I'll just keep or, an eye on it and see what your agenda is going to look like because I just at this point I don't know and obviously I won't the week before if I'm out I won't be able to do an agenda and schedule so we could do. Oh, you said you're gone from April twenty seventh. Through the ninth, okay. Yeah. So you're gonna miss the first two Mondays, right? Which we don't normally meet the first Monday, anyways. And I will say, normally I do schedule. Do we to have that wants to fill in for you? I know nobody. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and normally, I and plus two, I wouldn't have time to do the agenda. Can you so work with you and work on 
huh? No. Take my computer with I mean, me. we could just do one meeting. I, I That's know, what I'm saying. I know at times there's some s s things slow down a little mm -hmm. bit at the, at at the, the board. board so. And it may be that case. That's what I'm just saying is I just want to throw yeah. it out there. Let's revisit it in April when yeah. I have a better idea of what's coming. And then maybe we will have well, to meet back to back. But May having five Mondays, it seems like it would make sense to do the third and the fifth yeah. Monday and just bump it, bump it all back a week. Yeah, but that and that may goof up too many people too. So I don't. Is the fifth uh, uh, Memorial Day? Good point. They don't care about holidays. Oh, what I mean? don't either. <laughs> well, just, we're here, but so let's just, if you, you don't mind. The Sorry, the date third and the uh, did you say May. the third and the fifth week of May. Be the twenty eighth. Oh, the or third and the fifth week. Yeah, because gotcha. be you said third and the twenty ninth. Yeah, twenty ninth. So the fifteenth and the twenty ninth. That's, what, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, one we just take a look at as we get a little closer. Yeah, because I could reschedule that one to the 15th and then you could meet as usual. I mean, we still have one, two, three meetings before we right. have to make a decision. Right? That's what I'm yeah. saying is okay. let's wait and see because you may need to move and you may not. So, you may just be able to skip a meeting. We can just load up the one before it and the one after it. Uh -huh. Oh, look at Dave. He's giving you the evil eye. So but, <laughs> but you get one freebie, Dave. Think of that. Yeah. No, nothing oh. free if my app is paid late. Yeah. <laughs> so let me just That's see. Right. And if You're it's already something here. minor too, I mean, I could put together an agenda before I go, mm -hmm. and it could just, you know, Chris would have to fill into it if there's something extra. I could, you know, something like that if we had to. And then mm -hmm. we will. I should be at that point driving home. So okay. yeah, we'll see. Have you on speakerphone? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you want to hear. I've done my that, car mate done and from the yeah phone. I could see yeah <laughs> my husband would have to be you know gagged because he'd be like saying things so <laughs> no <laughs> um sorry yeah and then Chris again so let me know about the in June because he's going to be gone I just want to make sure we're going to have a quorum that night so and yeah, you guys can just do it without me and someone will be ready to yeah be chair if, if um if we have quorum so and um, that's okay. it. I told you the vote. So obviously cannabis passed. Um, so the only ones up for a vote to rescind in this case would be cannabis. People have 30 days. So but, okay. because it's Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. So but at this point, I haven't heard any rumors about that. So when when would we have to establish a cannabis board? Is that once we have somebody that wants to put in a retail space and they've been approved, then we would well, do that, or do we have to immediately establish a well, cannabis board? We're going to have to consider whether or not we even want to do one. You don't have to do one. Oh, okay. The state, oh, I thought you had to. No, the state will, <laughs> then I think what happens is if you don't have one, everything goes to the state. Yeah, but at the end of the day, what do you, what do you, what do we have power over? The only anyway? thing that you really are going to be able to do is to make sure that the permit ad adheres to current zoning regulations, but they're going to have to get a zoning permit anyway. And it has it's, to be inside. Yeah. I mean, it can't be outside the commercial zone anyway. It can't be outside um, it, it, where retail is allowed. So retail is allowed in, you know, certain districts. So you can't zone it out, which we mm -hmm. didn't but people will have to get a zoning permit. But the day after the vote, um, uh, someone from the store did call and, and they you know, said, can they move forward? And um, we just, Pam reminded them there's a 30 day vote to rescind. So, mm -hmm. um, but. Okay, so we'll just take that as it comes up. Yeah, so I yeah, I haven't had a chance to go back through the, well, to see if they've done any more updates, but I'm not sure. I mean, if we do it, I would assume in my opinion, the select board should be the cannabis control board. You're already the local liquor control board. You At know. least we have some authority there. But I don't see any authority that the cannabis control the cannabis control board is going to have. They're going to just they're going to be puppets. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you, you don't have it. You no, and, and you don't really have a lot it's of kind of like liquor license. So, you don't really have any going to take authority. care of anything we can do. Right. I mean, it's similar to liquor it's licenses. Just like liquor licenses. Because back in the day, you used to actually get reports from the local liquor control agent that if somebody had gotten trouble or they, you know, right. for something, you were, violations. you were, you were told about their violations, but not anymore. Yeah. So it is, it's kind of one of those things that seem like you're, you know, no longer, it's like sign this, do that. And I, we get a hundred bucks for the zoning, per, for the, excuse me, for the cannabis permit. But mm. so we'll go over the fine rules and you can decide whether or not you even want to form a cannabis control board what's the age to purchase cannabis 
21. So. Okay. Alrighty. We had select board meet minutes from the 27th of February. Chris, I have a couple corrections. Okay. Um, the next meeting I said in there was the 10th of April, and that's not right. Change it to 313. And I did not put a sentence in about adjourning. Do not know what time we adjourned, but it was. Uh, Is this the 27th? Are you on the right one? On the 27th, I amended it. I put in the motion to adjourn. Oh, I was just looking at the minutes that that you sent me. Okay, but and did you catch the motion to adjourn and the next meeting date? I didn't put it in here, but yeah, I did see that it was incorrect, but it didn't matter because we normally met when we met. I did see that it was wrong, but I didn't, I just took it out because I figured okay. people knew what schedule we were on, but yeah, I did. So the adjourned time is in there correctly, but there's no mention of the next meeting. No. Right. Okay. And, um, and, and do the rules and procedures tell us that we need to have the next meeting date? I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. Um, normally you don't put it in there. All it, all it says, I thought it says that we meet on the first and yeah, second, 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 second fourth, 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 fourth days, yeah. At the end of the town hall. And then, and Denise was present and her name isn't on here. We didn't add her. She told me that today. So we had, and you were sitting right next to Rick Benson. So I don't know how I yeah. did that. So we'll add Denise. So we'll have to amend the minutes to include Denise. Okay. Anything else? Or just need a motion to approve the meeting minutes as amended? So move. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And there were a couple of other communications in there, the DRB uh, Recreation Committee had their stuff in it. And there was uh, the finances for the yeah. February. Oh, Dave, look at that. I have 756. We're not done yet. <laughs> oh, we're not? <laughs> well, I've, I've heard the motion to adjourn. <laughs> I have another question. I don't, I can, I'll hold that one because I can ask you in the office. To okay, sure. Yeah, I'll be there. I have um, steering committee Monday night, or no, excuse me, today's Monday. I have a meeting tonight. Uh, Wednesday night is steering committee, and Thursday night is planning commission. So I'll be in Bethel late. Both or three nights. So. Okay. Or shoot me an email or whatever, Dave. Well, yeah. I did put some notes. Um, I told Denise uh, about the what? budget status report and did tell her that um, she had any questions. I do try to hand write some notes on there. Things we've got. The are we going to uh, discuss the uh, sidewalk tool replacement, or is that are you guys in the equipment? Committee going to decide that equipment committee will decide and then bring it to the select board. So they actually tested out something because of the equipment committee was kind of torn amongst themselves. So just so last week they left North Main Street, um, and they someone had brought in a small skid steer, yeah. and so what they were doing was they went through different parts of town to see where it would fit where it wouldn't fit and there only was a small section morgan said where it wouldn't fit and he's like somebody could totally shovel that out where right the the members sandwich shop. It's the place it doesn't mm -hmm. and because they also had another there was a tractor option but it won't fit under the awning of um the store richardson store so um they are looking at it so right now i spoke with aj on thursday and had asked them to go through and make a list with all the equipment like what's wrong with everything that when we sit down have a meeting with the equipment committee they'll have stuff in advance they can kick the tires decide you know look at a few things mm -hmm. and it may be the the cost of equipment is just it went from like this to this and i, I do believe that we're going to end up we're going to be making an equipment payment on something and we've talked about that before saying that the money we're setting aside just at this rate is not enough um it may be that we make a down payment and then we have a loan payment for a piece of equipment because the age, the way that things were purchased and the kind of the way they're staggering out is you have 
the loader, the backhoe, and the grater like in a clump, and All that's together. that ain't good. So basically, going well, they through, weren't. So the equipment committee started pushing them back. Well, they've also <laughs> you had the problem is you're you're making you're dealing with what you have at the time and trying to make some judgment calls about what we can what can last, what won't last, and right. what maybe just needs some money done to it. And the fact is just the the maintenance or lack thereof and some things that have happened to the equipment, it's just kind of it blew me away. I was up there at the garage the other day because I was asking about the sidewalk stand. Mm -hmm. They were saying the loader needs new tires and they're five grand a piece. Isn't it nuts? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No. I mean, I, like, I know. it's how crazy. Do you, how do you get $5,000 into a tire? I know. And, and it's funny because one of the that things. That same tire overseas would be four times as much. Yeah. And we talked to AJ and I were talking about it because when we meet the equipment committee, we talk about this schedule all the time. And AJ had made some phone calls and he's like, Trace, the numbers that we had in there, he's like, even in this last two years have gone, that truck went from here to here. And, uh, you know, and we had added more money each year to add to the equipment. And, and it's just, it's not sustainable to that rate of that and then right now they're telling us that we should order a next truck that we probably won't see for maybe three years and we don't have to accept it but at least get an order to get in the pipeline so it's just an interesting <laughs> or sad you know situation right i think now. we gotta have a real i mean i don't know yeah, obviously, I think it's up to the select board to to put it out there, but I I would say okay, you pick, you figure out how much money we need and we'll put it in the budget rather than borrow. Yeah, I mean we got a one and a half percent on the on the Sand Hill job, we're not, but that's that's going away quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. That, that that interest rate is already more than. Yeah, and it may. I'm not even talking about this year. I'm talking about maybe in the next. You know three to five years yeah, but that so. is, that's still going to go up it's, oh yeah no it's it's tough to know I, I agree and that's one of the things that one of the reasons that what I had said to AJ and Morgan was you need to make a list of everything that you think is wrong with each piece of equipment and then let's look at this and AJ was calling to get some more updated pricing too to kind of look at it and say okay what are we you know gonna do here and how are we gonna you know it's always the thing right you have this this much need, this much money. So um, I'm hoping to have the equipment committee together in the next couple of weeks. I'm waiting for AJ and Morgan to gather some information and then get it to the equipment committee so they can digest it and then get everybody together. But it's difficult for sure. Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was disheartening to see that last snowstorm, you know, beyond me, there's people that are in their 80s and they've already had need of an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And the snow is this deep and nobody's come up to plow anything yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I plowed our road, which I, after I told you, you can't do that. Well, <laughs> come out and stop me. Yeah. <laughs> because if there's a need. Yeah, absolutely. And we also, yeah, because we were also down a person. I, I know. I know yeah. That, so, yeah. I'll, so we were. It, you know, I don't know <laughs> what our uh, uh, exposure is. It, if I are, if it, we're obligated to clear, clear the road mm -hmm. and Bob Dean tips over and the ambulance can't get there to save it. The fire department would have got him out. I mean, but you do what you can. I mean, in that yeah, case, I, I understand. you know, but... when you have, yeah. And we were out with the grader. So, I mean, I think at that, I don't think our liability is any greater than it is what it is. I mean, we have no other person to draw, you know, you're down a person, you're down at that point, we're down the international. And I think the freight liner work, you know, was on and off so you have some okay the I'm, I'm just saying but no you're right i don't day, i don't i think it was very know. nice i didn't realize that you plowed so thank you very much and sometimes people will do that we hadn't made it to the top of sugar hill yet and that was a conversation i had with morgan and one of the guys who lives at the top plowed down and i'm like i said i'm so sorry i didn't realize you needed to do that it's, it's no problem but again we have somebody near the top who may have needed an ambulance and that, that's private road down to that gate more than halfway down there is a private road. Right. But the person who that, you know, someone who was older that lives up there is on Sugar Hill, not on a private road. So, but the person at the top who has the private road was one who was kind enough to plow down. So, well, look at all those people in Tahoe that yeah. have 10 plus feet of snow. 
but they have been trapped so up in the sad. mountains for weeks now. I know. Well, it's scary. Very scary. We couldn't get out, but that was. Couldn't get out of the driveway, or you couldn't get out Finley Bridge Road. Couldn't get out of our drive. Oh, okay. Uh, couldn't get out of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Need a better running start. <laughs> <That's me. laughs> You're all stuff. It, it <laughs> didn't matter. <laughs> all right. All right. Any other business come before the board? If not, just entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you very Thank much. You everybody.